Hi friends, in this video we are going to discuss about the design procedure used for the design of a spar gear. So the before going for the steps, so you have to identify the given data. So the given data will be the uh, power that has to be transmitted, RPM of pinion and gear. They may give the diameter of the pinion and gear and they want to give the material with by uh, material of the gear and the pinion. So based on that you find out the velocity ratio and other things and all. So when you go for the first step. The first step will be the identification of the weaker member. So since you have designed the spark gear, so it, the design has to be based on the weaker member. So you have to identify whether the pinion is weaker or the gear is weaker. So to determine the weaker member between the gear and pinion, so first you have to find out the product of allowable stress and Lewis form factor of both the gears and pinion. So whichever the lowest value is considered, so lowest, whichever the lowest value which will be considered as the weaker member. If the both gears and pinions is made up of the same material, then the pinion will be considered as a weaker member as the dia of the pinion will be the lesser than the gear. So now, how are you going to select the Lewis form factor? So, so to select the Lewis form factor, you have to see the pressure angle. So the equation will be from 23.115 to 23.117. So the equations are as follows. So y is equals to pi into this value, so 14 and a half. 20 degree and 20 degree step T. So pi is only for the making the things. So now when you go for this values that is the table or column. So pinion and gear. So sigma naught 1, sigma naught 2. Allowable stress. Lewis form factor y1 and y2. So sub summation of both the values. So once you got the values of this, you are going to go for the remarks which will be the weaker. So if the allowable stress is not given, so it should be selected from the table 23.18 for a given material. So second step will be the design of a weaker member. So in this we have majorly two steps. One is transitional tooth load using the equation 23.837b. The equation as follows. Ft is equals to 9550 into n Cs divided by n into r. So n is the power given in the equation and Cs is the service factor. n is your RPM and r will be the radius. So this n and r depends on the weaker member. If the pinion is weaker, it becomes n1 into r1. If the gear is weaker, it becomes n2 into r2. So r2, if the diameter is known, you can directly substitute r. You have to substitute that as d by 2. So d will be substituted as m into z. So CS, when you go for service factor, so service factor has to be taken from the table number 23.13 which is in the page number 23.76. The condition will be whether it is having a light duty, heavy duty or medium duty. Either it is go for at 8 to 10 hours, 12 to 16 hours or 24 hours continuously. So based on that you want to select the service factor that has to be substituted in the equation. So when you are going to substitute the values, this equation you are going to get the values in terms of is uh, constant value divided by m that is the module the second tangential to low, tooth law by the lewis equation which you already derived in the previous video so ft is equals to sigma naught b y p into kv so kv is the velocity factor so when you're going to substitute the value sigma naught will be taken from the first step b is nothing but i'm going to assume that is 9.5 m to 12.5 m so i'm going to assume normally as 10 m so that is you can get the equation in 23.132 so y is the Lewis form factor of the weaker member which I already calculated in the first step. So p is the pitch that is nothing but pi into m and sigma is allowable stress. So when I want to substitute these values, I want to get the values in terms of m square into kv. So I have to equate ft1 and its values. So I want to get some equations. So from that equation, you want to calculate the kv value. So kv velocity factor to find the velocity factor first you have to identify the vm that is mean velocity so that is given by pi dn by 60,000. So here d and n can be taken based on the weaker member d1 n1 or d2 n2. So once you find the values of vm so whether vm is greater or less than 7.5 or up to 12.5 or up to 20 or over 20 based on this the kv value equation will be varying so 23.134a 135a 136a 137a so i want to put the values of vm i want to find the kv so the previous where you calculated the equation equating this equation i have to substitute the values of kv and I also substitute the values of M. So M can be assumed by the table number 23.3 by trial and error method. You can start from the lowest that is 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 like this. You can go till you get the module M as the standard. So once the module M is fixed, 
have to go for the check for the stresses so calculate the induced stress by the equation that is sigma induced is equals to sigma naught into kv that is given by ft by byp if it is having the gear as we can remember it becomes b y2 into p so i'm going to substitute the value i'm going to find the sigma induced in newton per mm square then i'm going to find the allowable stress that is nothing but sigma allowable into kv allowable so i want to substitute the value so i want to get the sigma allowable if the sigma allowable is greater or equal to sigma induced then our design is satisfactory so you can assume the module m as a standard one so dimensions so the first step will be the dimension calculated in dimensions so this you can get from the table number 23.1 based on the pressure angle that is either it is 14 and a half 20 degree full depth and 20 degree stub involute profile so what are the things you want to calculate one is the addendum dedendum hd two thickness s total depth h working depth s dash clearance c outside diameter of the gear and pinion tangential total load ft center distance that is a phase width is nothing but b root diameter of the gear and pinion so any other data is required that also can be calculated over here coming to fifth step that is checking so in the check-in we have dynamic wear and endurance so the first will be the dynamic check for dynamic load so according to buckingham equation so dynamic load is given by this equation equation you can get in the equation number 23.155 from the data handbook so where is the load factor that can be obtained from figure 23.35a or 23.32 table so if the class of the gear is known then you can go for the figure number 23.34a so this can be shown when i'm solving the problems in the next further videos so fd is equals to ft 21 vm 20 plus by ft into ft plus bc 21 vm plus root of ft plus bc vm is nothing but the mean velocity and ft is the tangential truth load which you already calculated in the previous steps so substitute the values i want to give the fd value so endurance strength of the gear that is f minus 1 so it will be given by sigma minus 1 b into y m so where y is nothing but pi into the lewis factor so this is not y is not equal to the lewis factor it has to be multiplied by okay, pi so sigma sf that is the uh, strength of endurance limit can be taken from the table 23.33 we know that sigma minus 1 or sigma sf will be equal to 0.5 of the ultimate stress so for a safer design fd must be less than the allowable endurance strength so if they ask to calculate the endurance strength you just observe, make sure that the endurance stress should be less than the dynamic load so check for the wear load so again according to the working equation you can take that fd is fw is equal to d1 bqk so for a wear load always you want to consider the pinion as the member for calculating the wear load so in this b is nothing but the face width so q is the ratio factor that can be calculated using 2z2 by z1 plus z2 so the equation is nothing but 23.160 from the data handbook so where k is the load factor so that has to be calculated by equating the wear and dynamic load equations for a safer design fw should be always greater than fd so equate this equation with respect to fd so i want to get k some value which is to be greater than or equal to so by that you can go for the table number as 23.37b from that you can calculate the load stress factor from which you can calculate the surface oddness number in terms of bhn if this is not equal that is fw is, is not greater than fd then this are the changes you can make that is the decrease the number module m increase the phase width b increase the surface oddness and calculate FD, fd by decreasing the error so these are the four possible ways of changing your design if the fw is less than fd so this is the steps involved in design of spur gear thank you